Hey you guys, welcome back to my channel. If you're new here, I'm Christina, and in today's video, I'm gonna be sharing my homeschool space with you. This video is a collaboration with a bunch of other homeschool moms who are sharing their homeschool spaces and their homeschool rooms, and just showing you where they homeschool. My friend Tony from My Thrifty Homeschool put together this collaboration. She is hosting this collab. So make sure you check out her channel, which I linked in the description box below, as well as the playlist. I am so excited to get to watch and see all of these other moms and what their spaces look like and get inspiration and also just see how different families make their spaces work. Now, technically, we don't have an official homeschool room. So the room that I'm standing in, we call our playroom and it's kind of a cross between a playroom and a homeschool room. And I'll kind of give you a tour of that, but then I'll show you the other spaces in our home where we homeschool, where we keep homeschool materials, where we do our lessons. Really homeschooling happens all over our home. It happens outside of our home. It happens in the places that we visit. And so we know that homeschooling does not just happen in a homeschool room for most families, but I wanted to show you the places in and around our home where we do actually conduct lessons and do our learning and store our materials. So this room is specifically designed to allow for active play and not a lot of stuff. So anything that we have in here um, is purposeful. And so we have the wooden play gym and the nugget and the wobble board and things that can be swapped around to be used in an endless number of ways. So typically when I clean this room, I will switch how I have everything set up to get them excited for opportunities for endless play and for them to be able to switch things around however they would like to. So we tried to utilize the space as well as we could because it's not a huge space and we don't have a huge home. And so we have ballet bars on this wall, which can be used if this stuff is moved out of the way and the trapeze is up. But we also have the trapeze, which can be pulled down off of these hooks. And then in that case, I would obviously move the wobble board um, that's just a little bit of decor. And the other day I shared over on Instagram, I did put a couple of posters up here from the decor pack that came in the back to school mega bundle. But I ended up taking them down because they were kind of like falling and curling because really they need to be framed or like attached the right way. But I did really like how they went up, looked up there. So I might get a couple frames and put them up there. I'm just very wary in general of making things look too busy or having too many things on the walls. It's just not our style. So um, another main component of this room is the reading nook. And this has, of course, our hammock swing, which we love, and it gets used a lot. And then I'll show you kind of how I organize these shelves. But also, this is a main component of this room is our bird feeder. My kids absolutely love to watch the birds eat. And it's just a great way for them to be able to do nature study year round, right from inside. Um, and then you can see our little garden out there. Um, we have our back deck, which is, I'm sure, a mess right now, but I will show you anyway in our pools out there. Homeschooling truly happens, like I mentioned, in every room of this house. It happens outside on that sectional. It happens sometimes on the table that's on the other side of the deck. We've been known to do read-alouds on that pool deck. Um, and they spend a lot of time on that trampoline. So that definitely counts as like homeschool space because PE, right? So these shelves my husband built because we had a really big bookshelf in here and it took up a lot of space, but also having young babies and toddlers, they would just pull all the books off the shelves all the time and it would drive me crazy having to clean it up and reorganize and all of those things. And so I felt like less was more. So what I do is sort of like a book rotation in here so there are some books that are always out like typically these three books will always be out except maybe in the winter that one will get a put away along with that ocean board we love sensory play which is another main component of our homeschool time but that doesn't happen in this room so that's kind of more of what i'll show you in some of the other rooms why i say we don't have a quote unquote homeschool room because all of the homeschooling or most of the homeschooling does not happen in this room necessarily so i have the tree stump board and that ocean board those are from barn owl kids i'll link them in the description box because i have a code for you for those that one i love so much and i'm so excited to use more and more during the fall 
um, during tree month in Nature Study Club and then tree week in Exploring Nature with Children and then some other unit studies where trees will kind of come into play. Up here I have our handbook of nature study, which we don't always use, but I like to have it out as a reminder so that I will grab for it. That is one of the items from that decor pack from that back to school mega bundle. That was so sweet. I just threw it in a frame. That is just another way to utilize storage, like using the space that would usually be dead space for storage and decor is crucial in a small space that you want to keep tidy. So um, I also rotate out things like these wooden toys. Now, I do not keep a lot of toys out and accessible to my kids at all. Um, that is just our style. I feel like it's overstimulating. It's always a mess. It's too much for them to manage and clean up. So instead, I keep them up here and I'll rotate them out. And then I also have some in our homeschool closet, which I'll show you in just a minute. So I will rotate out books. Um, we are wrapping up weather month in nature study club so we have like our weather stuff out i have a feeling my little guy is going to want to keep this out because he loves coming in here and looking out the window and going outside and then changing the weather we also had our rainbow book and rainbow toys down there to go along with weather month and then we we're wrapping up an ocean unit study that we just kind of did on our own so that book and then obviously like those ocean things kind of go with that and then we are gonna be doing, like I said, a lot of study that includes trees in some way. So coming up very soon will be the fall book club, which I contributed on. And so my book will have a theme of trees to it. So just kind of starting to filter in some of those things. Here I just have board books. So I typically have board books on one or both of these shelves because that way my little ones can grab those and we don't have to worry about them ruining any nice books, although they're starting to come out of that phase, which is kind of nice. And I like to have these accessible for them. I do leave the little wooden stylus up here and they have to ask for it because I don't want them to get lost. Okay, another main area that gets a lot of use in this room is the art station. But before I show you that, I wanna talk about this chalk wall. I always wanted a chalk wall and I waited years to do it. And I am so glad we did it a couple of years ago. It gets used a ton. Now, to be honest, I was gonna wash this and I was gonna put a new scripture up. That's my 14 year old mowing outside, you guys. So bless him for mowing, but. <sighs> okay, hopefully he moves away from this room pretty soon. Anyways, but I was going to redo this wall, but I didn't wanna stage anything for the video, you guys. And I just thought this was kind of funny. So. Typically last school year in Exploring Nature with Children, whatever the topic was for that week, I would try to find a related scripture or related as possible. And I would put that up there with some kind of art that goes along with it, sometimes a poem. And it was just a great way for us to work on a memory verse and then connect the word of God with nature study. And then I would always leave them the second half to just kind of draw whatever they want. But then also I would have them add things that we learned. So if I had like put a pond up there, I would have them add pond creatures, for example. Um, but what I wanted to tell you is that grass week, which is what this is from, is from the springtime. So it has been months and months. This kind of got abandoned as soon as the weather got nice. Like clearly they still draw and play. But as far as doing that whole system, that kind of got abandoned. But I'm sure we will pick that back up. As a new school year comes and weather gets chillier and stuff like that, this will get a lot more use. So art station. This was another way to try to save space was this corner shelving to not have a table on the floor taking up a bunch of space. My husband custom built these shelves if you didn't see our playroom makeover a couple of years ago. Um, clearly this art station gets used a lot. Would I like it to look more aesthetically pleasing than this? Certainly, but this is evidence that it gets used a lot. Um, so we just have a pencil sharpener here and this basket of erasers and chalk so that they have access to it for the chalk wall. And then this is truly where we keep like not only our art supplies, but our school supplies. So markers, pens, um, colored pencils, regular pencils, and then this little caddy gets brought out to the table or to the living room every single day. 
So this is kind of like an easy one to grab, especially for my littler ones who typically need like scissors and glue. And then it has like little mini pencils and crayons. And sometimes we organize it by color, but right now that's the way it is. We have like some paint back there and then up here acrylic paints so that they can't grab them. Um, watercolors, paint brushes. These are like big thick crayons, which I try to keep for my toddlers, but they don't want them because it's like they have it figured out that they want the big kid crayons. Um, so right now I just have it holding up our little banners for our first day, which we did not officially start our first day. We are year round homeschoolers, but we will have a first day in the beginning of September. Those and that new print that I put up are also from that decor pack. I will link Sarah Ruth's website down below from Kindle Togetherness. Those were a contribution to the Back to School Mega Bundle, but that did end already. Um, but that's one of the reasons I love the bundles is because they have so many resources. These prints are from there as well. And I just kind of put these here. I'm not sure if they're gonna stay here, but they are sort of hiding um, my older son's Copic and a Oahu, Oahu, I don't even remember, markers. Um, um, I like let him keep them here because he likes them, but they are permanent. And so I don't like the littles to get them because that would be a problem on um, the furniture and the walls and everything else. So that is the playroom slash homeschool room. And then I will show you the homeschool closet, which is where I keep a lot more of our supplies. In this closet, we have a lot of things and I've shared this in previous videos, but since we are doing a homeschool room tour, um, it probably has changed a little bit in terms of organization, although not a ton. So this is not perfectly organized, guys. I try and I go through it and I sift through it and things like that, but this shoe organizer does make a huge difference. Um, on the bottom, this is not a perfect system, like I said, but this is where I keep a lot of these dry erase sheets that come in our knowledge crates. If they're super like themed for the season, I typically don't leave them in here. I'll put them away when it's a different season, but if there's something that can be used like any time like that, I'll leave them in here and then they can either grab them or I can pull them when I want them to do certain things. And so that's what I keep down here. This little water paint mat, some just random things down here. This probably needs to be cleaned out again. <laughs> We have some flashcards for states from our knowledge crate. We have some books in here. These are our manners cards, which I don't think I mentioned, which is another thing that always goes up on these shelves are our manners cards and our character cards from September and Co. So if you are not familiar with them, they have a character trait on the front and then on the back, it defines it and has some I can statements and a scripture that goes along with it. So I'll swap those out like every week or two. Sometimes we'll keep it from the month if we really need to work on it. And so I'll link those down below because I have a code for those as well to get 10% off all things September and Co. They have tons of amazing resources. So, and we have these in here and some of our little mini chalkboards from Chalk Full of Design. In here we have tons of flashcards. So again, they probably need to be reorganized, but um, we have like, these are for the wobble board. So for some movement, we have some Spanish in here. So tons of things, um, some washi tape back there. So these are all basically flashcards. There is some rise, rhyme or reason to it. Like these are math. Um, I guess there's somewhat rhyme or reason, but not, not hugely um and here are kind of like some of my things for you know like velcro and little book rings and some twine and things like that here we have like stickers and story dice and like staplers glue extra glue sticks and scissors um some extra crayons and chalk paint these are all like left over from our knowledge crates because we always have paint left over so i keep them because obviously we'll always use paint these are all different dice from different knowledge crates that I also keep in here. Um, this is just extra pens. Up here we have like learning games, our microscope, that kind of stuff. This is kind of like a bunch of different things. So this holds our sensory tools, but they're in a sensory bin right now. This is all curriculum that we'll use next or this year, but we're not using right now. Um, so we haven't started this like to every nation which i shared recently this is the first book that we will do 
in our um, Christian Heroes Then and Now books that go along with it. And if you haven't seen, I actually have a book bundle happening right now with YWAM Publishing. You can get five of these for $30. So it's $20 off, which is crazy. And you can get five of those books. Um, so this is where I keep curriculum and then books that will be going with what we're doing. So this to go along with our Peaceful Press, um, Playful Pioneers curriculum, which is in here somewhere. Here it is. Um, I also have a link and a code down below for like um, the Peaceful Preschool and anything from the Peaceful Press. These are just some Spanish dictionaries. These are our Tuttle Twins books, which I have a link down below for those as well. And then I just have like stamps and Play-Doh and this is a stamp set and whiteboards. This shelf I have like our wooden puzzles and like little wooden people and car. Like I use this for the little road numbers um, that I showed you. Little wooden letters, CVCE board. These are from Jack and Link Toys. And then we have like our musical multiplication, some beginner books that I just have put away for um, my three-year-old when he's ready because he's not quite there yet. Dot markers. This is something I wanted to mention that I think I've showed before, but I get asked all the time where and how I store all of my printables. Now I've said in the past, I really want to do like a legit filing system, but in the meantime, this works. So this is what I do. So I have this bin and I just use gallon Ziploc bags to keep all of them together and then smaller ones for like the smaller pieces. So this was like our Pondology game. Um, this is a springtime unit that could probably get put away. Um, let me try to give you a good example because this probably needs to be reorganized. This was from like our ocean unit, it has all different ocean resources. I'll try to give you a better example though. And I have more in the basement. But okay, so here's an example of one that we're going to do. This was a unit I created for a previous bundle and we have not gotten to it yet. Um, but I have like the small flashcards and things like that in a little baggie and then all of the full size printables in the big baggie. I'll show you one more example of that, like we're with the books. So here's one and I even put the books in with it because it goes with that unit that we, and we plan to do that this school year. So that is pretty much how I store my printables. Again, not a perfect system. This is like the other weather things so that they can do the weather. So I'll bring out the basket or they'll grab it on their own um, and do that. Other wooden toys that I swap out, like I mentioned. Um, this, this next shelf, we have the bird busy bin, which really they love. These are like the ones that actually, this one actually might not work, this one. Okay. So most of these still make the actual bird sound. Um, so I have those. This is our little wooden instrument. So when we do like morning music or something like that, this is just a Noah's Ark play set that they really love. Um, down here, kind of a combination of things. If you move this, this is coloring books and paper and magazines and things like that that they can grab whenever they want. There's, you know, this is something that they can grab to keep themselves busy, but also like sometimes I will pull out, it looks like we have no Nat Geos in here. Like typically I must have pulled them all out. Typically our Nat Geos are in here. I save them so that if I want the kids to do some research on an article, they're not getting on the computer all the time. I can just pull out some uh, magazines, but they have like this little pretend camping play set. They're magnetiles. These are just wooden blocks. Um, wooden puzzle board that's curriculum that my son will use later in the school year. This is our heritage letter. Um, if you didn't, haven't seen heritage letter, letter before, when we're done reading them, I put them in here. Their little cleaning set. And that's pretty much it. That is the homeschool closet where we try to stay as organized as possible. So that is this room. But let's, let me show you where most of the homeschooling actually takes place. Okay, so another place where we do a lot of our homeschooling is right at our kitchen table. As you can see up here, we always have some kind of flashcards, posters, banners, learning resources, artwork, 
to go along with whatever unit we're doing. So we are in our last week of weather and nature study club. So I did take down some of the posters and replace them with our artwork. Those are from the Titanic unit. Those are from the weather unit, the art tutorial that always comes in nature study club. I highly recommend nature study club. I'll link that down below guys. There is always an art tutorial. So we do a lot of our learning. If we're gonna be at a table, typically this is the table that we're at. And then this is where we keep our daily curriculum. So any of our curriculum that we're using on a regular basis is right on this card. So I'll kind of show you how specifically I have it organized. Not a perfectly organized system, but it works for us. Um, you can see it's kind of dirty as well as my walls. So just keeping it real. Um, so up here is where I keep my oldest three's curriculum. So my oldest, things that he uses every day or most days, um, same for my 11 year old. He's got like his um, notebooking, notebook in here, his math with the answer key, because I typically have him check his own answers. His student reflection journal should be somewhere in here. Yeah. And then same thing for my seven year old, all of her curriculums. Some that she does every day, some that she doesn't. We still have like some random little ones in here that she can just grab and do on her own when she wants to because she enjoys doing that. And then even little activity books that she can grab when she wants to. It's gonna get interesting when my younger two have curriculum as well. So for right now, tucked in the side, um, I have my three-year-old's little doodles and pre-writing. And he has like that a little summer um, activity pack that I had gotten and bound for him. And then we haven't started this yet, but this ABC here do, um, I have that there. And then I have some dry erase sheets in here that are more seasonal, like if they're for the season and I wanna remember to use them, I stick them in here. This is packed pretty tight right now. And then over here, just some random things. I have like my planner, probably doesn't need to be on here, but it fits. So this second shelf is like my teacher's guides or like extra little nature study notebooks for like my littles, because like I said, they don't have their own thing. So they don't have a whole bunch of curriculums, but I do make them a nature study notebook because otherwise they're upset if I don't. And then things like answer keys for my oldest son. This is kind of embarrassing because we've been doing this for a very long time. We still have a few lessons to finish up in our US Constitution and Government course, but we do it like once a week. There are some weeks we don't do it at all. So that is still on here. And then on the bottom is a mix of things. So all those Nat Geos that I mentioned ended up on here, which is totally fine. I don't mind because then I can access them more easily. My younger kids notebooking notebooks, which you know, how much notebooking are they really doing? They actually do like to do it though. And then just a couple activity books and then these little water wow books for my littles that they can grab or we can have on hand to grab for them if they're getting squirrely and we need to keep them distracted. So that is our homeschool cart. Okay, so next place that homeschooling happens a lot is right here on this couch and on this floor and even over um, on that little window seat sometimes on the floor with one of those floor pillows. We do lots of our read alouds and even some of our full lessons in here in the living room. If you've seen any of our do a lesson with us videos in the past and things like that. And this is also where we store our books. So here in this little fireplace storage unit, we store all of our books that I'm not rotating into the playroom or that aren't super seasonal. The ones that are super seasonal go in bins in our basement. And so on the top, I have board books and then these little hello books. On this shelf, I have hard covers. And then on this shelf, I have paperbacks and some little readers that my seven-year-old has. So that is this side. And then over on this side, I have kind of like my mom books and some faith books. Then here, more like my older boys have a mix of like fiction and nonfiction, just kind of more like chapter book types books. And then I have this one shelf where I let them have some toys. Um, so what I showed you in the playroom and what you see here is really it for toys that are out. This basket here that does have like our exercise mats and those floor pillows will have like a few stuffed animals, maybe a couple dolls in the bottom, but nothing crazy. 
And I almost forgot to share that this is our morning basket, which is more like a morning and afternoon basket. Um, don't mind the peeled paint from toddlers. This has all of our read alouds and devotions and things in here um, that will kind of cycle through. Obviously don't do all of these every day, but we'll do a few in the morning and a few in the afternoon. So yeah, that's part of our homeschool stuff too, right Sethi? So one more space that is actually a homeschool space, I guess you could say, is our little ottoman here. And so I shared our morning basket, which is over on the windowsill, which has like all of our books that we're reading, our read-alouds and things. And then this is where all of our Bibles and most of our devotionals are. And so as you can see, there are many different translations of the Bible and family devotionals, picture Bibles family Bibles, um, storybook Bibles, board book Bibles, more devotions, and these are actually devotions from my father-in-law who is a pastor and so I try to keep these nice but these are really special to us and these little studies that my two oldest boys are doing. I found these at the dollar store, so this is super random, but they're actually cool. There's actually places to write and everything in here. So these are like different fruits of the spirit. Um, the Action Bible, my older boys really love. So it definitely isn't for younger kids because it is pretty graphic um, because the Bible in graphic novel, if you can only imagine, um, is pretty graphic. So. That is another place where I would consider a homeschool space because when we do our devotions in the morning, this is where we grab our Bibles from. If we have a unit that we're doing that asks us to look up a Bible verse, it's actually pretty cute. My two and three-year-olds love to be the ones to hand everybody their Bible, so we give them that job. They open it up and hand everyone their Bibles, and it's just pretty cool. Thank you guys so much for watching. I hope you enjoyed seeing our homeschool spaces how we organize things, where we learn, and hopefully it gives you some inspiration to see whether or not you have a room dedicated to homeschooling or you have a space where you can dedicate to homeschooling, you really can get creative and resourceful and make your space work for you. You really don't need any space at all other than the space you live in in order to homeschool. So hopefully between my video and some of the other mom's videos, you can see that homeschooling is not dependent upon a special room or a special space. It is dependent on your family and how you make it work for your family. So if you like this video, please give it a thumbs up. If you are not already subscribed, I would love if you would stick around. If you're new here or you're visiting from another one of the mom's channels in this collab, introduce yourself in the comments below. I love to get to know you guys. If you're not already following me over on Instagram, you can follow me there at rooted underscore home life. I hope to see you soon in one of my next videos and until next time, stay rooted.